was Jesus born on December 25th? No. First of all, in first clue, Luke 2, it says, And she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in cloth, laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Mm -hmm. In the same region, there were some shepherds staying out in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. That alone is a clue right there. It is? Yeah, absolutely. The people who argue December 25th mm -hmm. seek to deal with this. The, the rabbis say in the Talmud that shepherds would only be out in the fields around March um, until the next rainy season. See, so people argue, well, you know, the winter there is not, the winter is still gets cold there too. I mean, if you've been to Israel in the I winter, <laughs> it does get, I've been there when there's been snow. It's not, so it's not just that they're out there, they're not just keeping their sheep in the pens, they're out in the fields and at night, which is very strange. Why would they be out in the fields at night? Well, you know, some people have argued, this is another one, that he was born in the autumn, he was born during the Feast of Tabernacles, which I understand because they say, well, God tabernacling with us. The problem with that is that, that during Tabernacles, the males had to all be in Jerusalem. So the birth of Messiah caused, would, would not cause Joseph to break the law by being outside of Jerusalem when he's born. It's not going to do that. The birth of Messiah is going to fulfill everything. So there is one time of the year that shepherds would especially be out with their flocks at night. Only one. That's in the springtime. Why are they watching their flocks? at all hours because shepherds during one particular time do that it's when the sheep give sheep give birth to lambs in that the lambing season that's the only time that's what they're watching at any time of day any time of night they're watching for any birth that's the only time and when would that happen the lambs are not like people they're only born at one time are born in the springtime that's the first thing they're born in the springtime it could start as early as, as February, but it really would go March, April. That's the center. That's the Hebrew month of Nisan. We're going to also go to the Nisan is that month. So during that, they'd be watching it, which all fits together because, you know, the shepherds, their job is to watch because of lamb. They make sure their lamb is okay. So it's what a perfect thing to begin with because Jesus is the lamb of God. Mm -hmm. So why would God have, who would he have to greet the birth? Oh. Shepherds who oh. are watching for the birth of the lamb. So here, that's so perfect of God. Wow. Messiah okay. is the Lamb of God, and they're there greeting. That's what they're doing. And so, and where is he born? He's born in Bethlehem or Bethlehem. And the thing is that that Bethlehem, people don't know this, because of some clues we have in the writings of the rabbis, was actually a place where the lambs that they had were actually the lambs for the temple sacrifice. Uh -huh. Bethlehem, especially was the lambs for the temple sacrifice. Really? So here, what more perfect place and time, Messiah born at the time of the lambs when the sacrificial lambs are born wow. in the place where they're born. Now yeah. here's something else that is gonna you know, point to this period. And there's a clue in Exodus, Exodus 12, it says take a lamb, a male, one year old, it's the Passover lamb. And so now you can read that and miss something. The, the lamb that is the Passover lamb, and Jesus, Yeshua, is the Passover lamb, is, is a year old at the time of Passover. So it means it had to be born a year before in the springtime mm -hmm. to be a year old. Mm -hmm. So here Messiah, you know, so the, the Passover lamb dies on Passover. Messiah is the Passover lamb. He dies on Passover. But it's also born at the time of Passover. That's Nisan, spring. So Messiah, the lamb, the Passover lamb is born at the same time when it dies. So that's the next clue. And so the, first, the next thing is the holy day. next clue is the holy days of Israel. Mm -hmm. And here, here, what does that have to do with, with this mystery? Well, the central events of Messiah's life and his time on earth, they all take place on Hebrew holy days. Mm -hmm. I mean, all, and, and we'll start, and one people don't even realize, Palm Sunday, the first thing is he's going to his passion, getting on that dock, going, that's a Hebrew holiday. People don't realize the first Hebrew holiday ever given to Israel was Palm Sunday. And, and where it is, <laughs> it doesn't say Palm Sunday, it's, it's in Exodus 12 when it says, take a lamb on the 10th day of the month. You'll take the lamb. You'll keep it for four days. You'll take the lamb to your house. That's called the 10th of Nisan. The first command given to Israel to continually keep. The 10th of Nisan is the day of the lamb. The day that they take the lamb to their house, keep it there mm -hmm. until the time of the sacrifice. So what happens? The 10th of Nisan, count back from the Last Supper at Passover, the 14th, 15th of Nisan, go back. You are at Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday is the 10th of Nisan. It's the first Hebrew day ever given, and it's the day that they are actually, they're, when he's coming to Jerusalem, they're all taking the lambs to their house. God is taking the Lamb of God to his house oh. 
on the day of the lamb being taken to the house. Oh my! It is. It's all it's there. Really amazing. And, and the first and the first thing in this, the first command ever given to Israel to go was think about this: was take the lamb. In Hebrew, you can translate it, accept the lamb, mm -hmm. receive the lamb. The first he, the first command he gives to the Jewish people is accept the lamb. And so, and they still, and when they fulfill that first commandment, it's all the ages complete. But that was the very first command, and that was the day. And it also can be even translated, seize the lamb. He comes into Jerusalem, mm -hmm. he's going to be seized. But so all the lambs, he's watching them come in, and he is coming as the lamb of God. God is moving him, getting ready for the sacrifice on the same day. I mean, God is so perfect, mm -hmm. so perfect. So everything, that's just one. I didn't even mean wow. to share on that. That's one. Beautiful. And the thing is that, and then, and then when does he die? He dies on the other Hebrew holy day, which is Passover, the lamb. When does he rise? He rises on the other Hebrew holy day. We can do a whole thing. It's the feast of first fruit, the day of the first fruit, when the first fruit is lifted up from the earth as the new life, after the, the, the new life of God, he is raised up as the first fruit. Paul even says, he's the first, it's on the day of the first fruit. Everything happens. Then, the thing is, what's the next great event of the church? It's Pentecost. Pentecost is a Jewish holiday. People don't realize that. Yes. Pentecost is Shavuot in Hebrew. You know, you know that, that the word Pentecost is a Jewish word that those, those same Greek rabbis who came, who came up with the who came up with that the tower, calling it the, the, the come let us build a tower. They're the same ones who came up with the name Pentecost. And Pentecost is a Jewish holiday. In fact, or, there are some Orthodox Jews will know that they're celebrating Pentecost. They were the first Pentecostals. <laughs> they're celebrating that. And Moses was the Pentecostal. He told them to celebrate it. And in Greek, it's Pentecost 50 days. In Hebrew, it's Feast of Weeks. Same thing. So everything happens on a Hebrew holiday of his life. His death, his yeah. resurrection. So, of course, his birth. God is very accurate and absolute. It's going to happen on a significant holy day of Israel. So the question is, which? Which one? It begins in the springtime, the first feast is Passover. The age begins with Passover, Messiah on the cross. And it ends with tabernacles, when God will come down and tabernacle. Mm -hmm. And, and so, so we, we can do a whole thing on this. But the whole age is that. So when would he be born prophetically? It's not going to be in the autumn. That's the second coming. Got to be in the spring again. It all points back to the spring. And it's got, it points back to this month called Nisan, which means the beginning. The month means the beginning. That's what it means. That's when it all begins. So, and everything he does in order. Yes, on Sunday, he does. he does it according to those days. So if you got, you count back, you got resurrection in the, the Nissan, you got Passover, 15th of Nissan, you got Palm Sunday, 10th of Nissan. You only have a few more days from the beginning that this has got to happen. So it's narrowing it down now to the very first days of Nissan. And so now the, now the, next, the next clue. Every day, every time he fulfills a holy day, he doesn't just fulfill the time. If the theme of that day, he fulfills it, for instance. Passover, he dies with the Passover lamb. First fruits, he rises. So everything has to do with that. Is there any day on the Hebrew calendar that would match up with birth, new beginning, new everything? There is one day, and it happens to be a Nisan. And the one day is Nisan 1, which is the very beginning of the Hebrew year. The very day that begins everything. And so, and this is a day that it's a very, it's a new, it's a real new year, though most, well, most Jewish people think Rosh Hashanah. Yeah, Rosh Hashanah. It's not. The new, the real new year of God is Nisan 1. Now, the thing about Nisan 1 is you don't have to be in Jerusalem. There's no command to be in Jerusalem, yet it's a holy day. So okay. Joseph could be there at that time. Uh -huh. And it's also, it's the, think about this. It's the day, it's the day that begins the calendar. It, it changes the calendar. The, the old calendar is gone. The new calendar begins. What does Messiah's birth do when he comes to this world? He changes the calendar. Mm. The whole calendar right. is changed, B.C., A.D., and there's one, one day in the Hebrew calendar that matches that, and that's Nisan 1. It's the calendar changer. But now we're going to even go deeper. We're going to go to the moon now. Okay, we go to the moon. <laughs> but this is not, and I want to tell you, as we're doing this, it's, there's all sorts of things we're, that touch on a million other things. So it's, it's the mystery of the moon. And that is, the Hebrew calendar is based on the moon. You know, and that's where we get the word month, month, month. So the moon. And so when Jesus died, people don't realize this, he died at the full moon. So it was when he died, it was a full moon. Why? Every Hebrew month begins with a new moon, starts. Right. It reaches its peak at the full moon. That's what it's called. The month is in its fullness. That's right in the middle. Jesus died on the Nisan 1450, in the middle of, that's Passover. That's when the, the moon had to be full that day, had to be full. And the symbol, Nisan means the beginning. The month means the beginning. The full moon means the be, it's, the, it's the fulfillment of this beginning, this first coming. It's at the, the fullness of it. 
So his whole life is leading up to this, this, this fullness, this moon. And so when would his life begin? If it, if it fulfills that the full moon of Nisan means the month of the beginning, first coming, it would begin on the new moon of, that, of Nisan, the very beginning, of it, and that's Nisan 1. So this whole month, there's a moon mystery behind this whole thing, too. Every Hebrew calendar, every year. But I want to go now to the stars. We went to the moon. Let's go to the stars. Okay. And to do the stars, we have to go to the people who were priests, but not Jewish priests, of um, the religion called Zoroastrianism, which we know as, the, or the Magus or the Magi. Oh. The, mad, the strange magi, or in Hebrew, the magim. You know that there's actually a prophecy about the magi. Uh, people are really, in the Old Testament, Isaiah 60 says, Arise and shine, your light has come. And then it says, Nations will come, kings will come. And then it says, A herd of camels will co cover your land, but they will come bearing gold and frankincense. That's Isaiah 60. It actually mm. prophesies the magi. Mm. They will come with gold and frankincense. I don't ever miss gold and frankincense. <laughs> it's, 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 it's God, it's it's, there's so much in there. You read it, and you have it. It's like I think only God just puts it in there. I don't know. You know? And it says, it says, gold and frankincense, and they'll come praising the Lord. That's the Magi. So the word's given that they're going to come. And then you find in Matthew, it says, Jesus, Yeshua was born in Bethlehem, and Magi from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who was born king of the Jews? We saw his star in the east, and we came to worship him. Here we have now the clue of the Magi. The Magi that were priests and, as you said, astrologers. Now, we know astrology is wrong, bad, have nothing to do with it, no Christian has any business, but God is sovereign, and that's what they know. They're looking at astrology. Back then, astrology and astronomy were basically the same. They believed they were sovereign, but God is able to speak. So, so the thing is that, what is this star? Now, there are people who have said it's, it's some, you know, conjunction. Well, the problem is no natural star is able to move across the thing. I mean, it can move in the heavens with everything, but it can't move and guide you to a place. So it is, it is a supernatural thing. But well, what's happening is, well, what do we know about this star, you know, that they're led to a manger? And first of all, say something else, and you probably all know it, but this is a misconception. You see the, the nativity scenes, and you see the magi there. The magi were never there. They were never there. The magi were two years later. Now, do we have a clue? When did this happen? Well, it's, we got, we, he, it's Herod's alive, and he says two years killed him, when, according to when he saw, they saw the star. So. Herod, do we know when he died? Herod died 4 B.C. So right away, we know that Jesus was born B.C. He wasn't born on the zero. We know that's a mistake. It's really not the year, whatever it is, it's 2012, it's really 2016, if you go, or, or more than that. But he had to be born B.C. because Herod died B.C. So then we go, it's two years before. So that's pointing us to 6 B.C. with the Magi seeing something. Now, here's another, another clue here in the mystery. If the Magi just saw a star in the sky, how would they know, how would they know that this is king of the Jews? I mean, how would they put a star, you know, a star appears, but how do you know king of the Jews? One interesting thing is that remember there was the prophet Daniel and he went to Babylon. The Bible says that he became the head of the wise men of Persia. The wise men of Persia were the Magi. So actually Daniel is the one who actually gives the time of Messiah's coming. You know, he gives that countdown. Mm -hmm. so, so, could, so it's possible he could have passed down that went to the Magi the time around when he came. They still wouldn't know when he's born, but it would say when he's known as Jerusalem. So but they could already be saying, okay, something may happen soon. But how do they know, but looking at a star, how do you get king of the Jews? And here's a thing, and remember, it's not about astrology is wrong, but God's able to speak the language to speak them. Mm -hmm. And this is the thing, around in 6 BC, same time, mm -hmm. we know there was something that happened, anyone into the stars would have seen it. There was a convergence of Jupiter, Saturn, Venus, Mars, all converging to one part of the sky. And there was also something called a double occultation. But anyway, there's all these things happening. And, but they said, where is the king of the Jews? They were astrologers. In the language of the stars, one, they thought it was a star, but it was a, a wandering star, it was a planet. One star was linked to the king, when you see it, and that was Jupiter. When you saw that, that was the king star. When you, or it was a planet. But then what did they do? How do you get Jews? They say, where's the king? There's an ancient astronomer, a Greek, who or, or says this in a book called Tetra Biblia. Says, says there was in the land of Judea was linked to the constellation in the ancient world to Aries the ram. That the ancient world, when they saw that, they, they said Judea. So this, the, why is that significant? What happened in 6 BC is that all these things converge, and Jupiter it comes in this picture big time. Things are happening with Jupiter, and they all come to the place that's linked to Judea in, in the sky. 
it's all linked to this thing, Ari. So they're all, they would look at this and say, king, they would say Jew, and, they, and here's the star, something happens divine. So they would come from that, that a king of the Jews has been born, who is somebody beyond anything we've known. So they would come by that, just by that, be able to say, where is he who was born king of the Jews? We saw his star. And, he, and modern astronomers have identified that such a conjunction happens only once every 6,000 years. So here it happens. With this, they come. When did this convergence happen? And again, it's not about the Magi. It's about that God is able to lead anyone who's seeking him. Yeah. But when did this happen? It happened in 6 BC, when? In the springtime. Oh. Again, in the springtime. Oh. But now the mystery gets bigger. Okay, now hold now hold on. Now it's okay if you get or you don't get. But here's the thing. Here's another, another real clue in the Bible, big one. Luke 1. It says, in the days of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zacharias of the division of Abijah. And he had, or Abijah, he had a wife in the doors of Aaron. Her name was Elizabeth. It happened while he was performing his priestly service before God in the appointed order of the division. According to his custom, he was chosen by law, and he went in, so he went in to minister. Now, we got a clue right there. This is the birth of John. Mm -hmm. His father is a priest. He's yes. a Kohanim mm -hmm. from Aaron. And he, is, he, goes into, he goes to minister. Now, what we know right there is there was a set time when the priests would go in, and they were divided up into courses. What his course was Abijah. So we can find out. When Abijah's course was, we've got it. You know, we've nailed it. If you can find out, because you can, okay, he was there. Then six months later comes the birth of, there comes the conception of Jesus. You got all in. But the, the trick is, how can you find? Now, there's a calendar somewhere. Yes. Yes. No. Yes. You think there is one? On there is one. I'm there is one. Yeah, there is one. First of all, in Second Chron in First Chronicles 24, we read about the divisions of the priests. So we now know the order of when Abijah was in there. He was number eight. He was the eighth, it would go by weeks. One week, two weeks, he would be the eighth week in order. They'd rotate. They had 24 altogether. So just know there, you got eight. But you gotta, you gotta know, but the, the key is, the key is, when does it begin? Because we can't tell when this happened until, we know he's number eight, but we can't tell until we know when he began, okay? The answer here, the clue comes from the Dead Sea Scrolls. Oh. The Dead Sea Scrolls, mm. which by the way, were only discovered by this Arab shepherd who threw a stone into the, into the cave and it smashed these pottery, and comes the, comes the greatest find of the, the oldest Bible ever in history, just at the same time when Israel is coming back as a nation, God restores this, this book. The Dead Sea Scrolls. Okay, here is, here is the thing. There is a writing in one of the scrolls, actually, that contains a calendar of the priestly horses. Okay, in the Dead Sea Scrolls. So this is 2,000 years waiting to uncover. And so the thing is, now the key here is, okay, this is down is that this, this calendar goes for a few years before it repeats again. It's not a one year, it's not, it's not the same every year. So you gotta, you, we gotta narrow down when exactly, what year was, if you can get any priest, whenever this order was on this date, you can nail down the rest of them, okay? That is the key. So, here is the, here is the they, they give a mystery. And this is gonna sound like Indiana Jones. Okay. okay? And you don't have to get it, and you know, it doesn't matter. We're not gonna, but they give, it, they, they give a date of when the calendar began. And here's what it is, but you're not gonna get, it's okay, but it sounds like this is Hollywood. It, in the Dead Sea Scroll it says, when the sun displays itself from the east and shines in the center of the sky at the base of the vault from evening to morning on the fourth day of the week of the sons of Gamul, the course of Gamul, in the first month, it's the first year. You don't have to get any of it. But let me tell you what it's saying. It's saying that the priestly calendar begins at the, at the equinox, the spring equinox, and it, on a Wednesday, the fourth day of the equinox. Okay? So that's all we get. Then the Dead Sea Scroll gives you a few dates, and one of those dates matches this of when this would have been at the time we're talking about. And so when you, and, but before I give you the, because it's going to be the nail, the nail of this, there's one other thing of it, and that is there is another ancient Hebrew writing that confirms that this is the, they're giving you the right date. And that's the Talmud. Because the Talmud says, here's the, here's the clue, Talmud writings of the rabbis say, the Temple of Jerusalem was destroyed in 70 AD. It was destroyed on a Sunday, they said. And they give you the name of the priests, the course, who were in that, that week. So just by that, oh, you've got it. And the thing oh. is, the question is, so if you take that, and all you do is wind it back to the time of Jesus, or take the other one by the Dead Sea Scrolls, which is before Jesus' birth, and wind it forward and see if they met. The first thing is they match. The Dead Sea Scroll date and the, the Talmud match. So we got it, okay? 
So, so now you're going to find is when did this date appear? When was Abijah ministering at this time? And the, and the ultimate thing is when you do this, if you do, you work it all together, when does, when does the birth of Messiah take place according to it? Ready? In the month of Nisan, late March, early April, 6 BC, the priestly calendar leads us to a very specific time and a date. It leads us to March 20th. 6 BC, and if you take the calendar of the priests, and it leads us to the same date so as the Talmud does, which, is, which happens on the Hebrew calendar is Nisan 1, the day of the beginning of all things, mm-hmm. the day that we said he would be born. Now, one other thing here, there's, there, there's a thing here that there was an early church, where we went from there, and I'm going to go into the hidden vaults of the Vatican, okay, and in there... There is a writing of a church father called Hippolytus. And what he did is they use him and they say, Hippolytus, he's the one who gave us December 20th. He told us in the early days, it's the 25th of December. But in one of the, the writings, it's been censored because, because in one of the writings there, it says that, it says, it's like they put that in. You, go, you look at his writing, he says in the same thing, no, Messiah was born in the month of Nisan. This is an early church writing which was censored. There's even a document in the Vatican Church. This is not, you know, crazy stuff. It's there, which gives a document which gives, gives Nisan as the date of Messiah's birth. Mm-hmm. But now I want to give you one more. It's going to bring it home, okay? okay. One more, okay. okay? What is the, if you say, what is the, the most exact shadow of, in the Old Testament, of the birth or incarnation of Messiah? What would you say? And it's the tabernacle. Because it's God mm-hmm. tabernacling with us. Mm-hmm. In fact, when you read John, the beginning of the Gospel of John, the Word became flesh, that's the incarnation, and tabernacled among us. The Word in Greek refers to the tabernacle of Israel. So as he set up his tent, he came there and set up his tent. So the thing is, so here it is, it's, it's, the Bible speaks about the tent, tabernacle, as being a sign of being in the flesh, being in the being incarnation. So here the thing, the question is, is there a clue? And the last, the last piece is going to be in the Bible itself. We, people, I, can't, I, I can't believe I missed this. I can't believe most. The Bible is giving you the clue. The, the tabernacle is, is the symbol of God dwelling with us. Mm. So here it is. Could it have a clue? The first thing to know is when, did the ta- when was the tabernacle built? Right after they went to Sinai, Mount Sinai, all that stuff, God gives us built a tent. They start building a tent. Now, how long does it take for a child to be from conception to birth? How long? Nine, nine months, nine. slightly less, nine months. How long was it for the tabernacle from conception to finishing? Nine months. Nine months. The same. Mm. It was, here it is, the same thing. It's right there. And so then the final thing is the Bible actually gives the date. We can find out when the tabernacle was finished. If we can find the date, the tabernacle is finished, you've got it. Again, oh. so now here it is. So where is it? There's a scripture. The scripture is Exodus 40, mm-hmm. 1 and 2, which says, You shall raise up the tent of the tabernacle of the congregation. You'll put it there, the Ark of the Testimony. When? Here it is in the original. The answer is, Beyom HaChodesh HaRishon Be'achad LaChodesh. That's the answer. <laughs> the translation, here it is. In the first month, Nisan, on the first day of that month, Nisan 1, the exact day from the beginning. Everything points. It, the beginning on Nisan 1, springtime, he was born. And this is everything. I mean, from the priest of the Magi mm. to, the, to, the, to, the, uh, to the priestly calendar, to the Bible itself, all the Word became flesh and tabernacle. It's all there. It all was nine months up until the day, Nisan 1, when he would be born from the censored writing of the church, it's all there. And why is it important that he would be born in this way? First of all, when it, the first thing is, it's the day that everything becomes new. Mm. Everything is yeah. new and yeah. everything else becomes old. And what's it saying? When Messiah's presence comes, everything before is old. Everything ha- now is new. Yeah. And the power of Messiah's presence is the power to make everything new. Yeah. And the power to make everything old, old. That's when we're born again. When we're born again, that's when, when Nisan, no matter what day it is, it becomes Nisan 1. Right. It becomes springtime, becomes the beginning. Yeah. But not only once, we need him all the time. Whenever yeah. we receive his presence, 
everything becomes new. Mm -hmm. Everything becomes new. That's the power of God. If the more we dwell in His presence, it says we walk in the newness of life. And the other thing, the power of Messiah coming, He changes the calendars. Everything becomes B.C. A.D. So before we knew Him, all B.C., we know Him A.D., but every moment mm -hmm. we receive Him again, every time, every time we, we receive Him in our lowest point, mm -hmm. it becomes B.C., it's now A.D. It's, mm -hmm. it's always day one for the people of God. Yeah. If we dwell in His presence, it's day one, new chances, second chance, everything is new. Even the new covenant itself, you know, we think new covenant, well, it means it's newer than the old. That's not what it means. It means the covenant of newness. Mm -hmm. It never gets old. It doesn't matter. We might get old, but if we stay right in there, we never get old. The new covenant is always new. He's the God of second chances. New, 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 new. And one other thing, this is an interesting thing, because Nisan 1 is the true begin, is a true new year for Jewish people. But Jewish people don't celebrate it because they think Rosh Hashanah is. That's, yeah. but that's, the Bible says that's in the seventh month. Where do we get December 25th from? A few things. I mean, one is, you know, the problem is when everything went away from Israel, went away from the Jewish people, everything started getting, you know, <laughs> you know it became kind of, uh, you know, paganized. Mm -hmm. And so you have, the, you have the winter solstice going on. You had all the Saturnalia festivals, December 25th. It was the lowest. It was the time when the sun was, the day was the smallest. And so now the light's going to come out again. So uh -huh. it's called the day of the unconquerable sun. So they, they took that. And interesting because even on there, in the Roman calendar, it's, it's very close to New Year's. It's a January 1st, but, but it's, the, it's, the, it's the Western New Year's, not the Hebrew New Year. So that's the only thing. But they took, a, they took a pagan feast when they were already celebrating the sun and the light in the world, and they said, okay, let's, let's take this and let's do it for Jesus, sort of. And we'll get all the people to now just say, keep doing it, but do it for Jesus. So that's how, that's how December 25th came. But I, I do not endorse Santa Claus. I do not endorse focusing on these things. Focus on, on Messiah. Yeah. Focus on the Lord. Amen. Don't let anything you know, take away. That's what it's about. But when you, the thing we are be careful about, and, and we don't want to go crazy and be mean, but if we do not stand on the solid word of God, his numbers don't change, his times don't change, when we let error come in, do you see how one date, one error, one dumb tradition can set us off track because everything you're teaching us is the harmony of God's Word. It's the fingerprint of God. 